Today we're going to do some metal work. Um, I started this with a project that I took a class with called a metal and encaustic journey. And this is an encaustic book and metal book that I made. And it has some pages in it that we won't go over. But what we are going to look at today is this piece right here. It's a metal, uh, metal uh, piece of art metal that's been embossed and painted and kind of a fun technique. Fairly simple to do and it doesn't take a lot of time. So I hope you enjoy the process today. For this particular project, we're using what's called art metal. It's a thin metal and it is painted on one side and aluminum. It's an aluminum metal that is painted on one side. So what we're going to do, you can see I've already done my first stamp. I've taken my first stamp. These are Donna Downey's poppy stamps. And I've taken the first stamp and I've already stamped onto my metal. I will take my second stamp and we'll ink up this stamp. And we'll go ahead and make sure we are going the right direction and stamp it with a bit of pressure the image doesn't have to be perfect, which is good. It looks like my ink's a little bit dry. But you notice one thing to keep in mind, to stamp, to make the type of image that we're going to make for this class, we're going to emboss. And I'll show you this. If you can see the raised, this is embossed on the top side. And so in order to get the raised lines from a stamp, we are going to stamp on the back side and then we'll trace the lines with, with a stylus. So, which is why the image doesn't have to be perfect is we are just going over the line. We're not actually worried about the precision of the stamping itself. So as you can see, I just trace, trace the lines of the stamp. I like to go off page. I find that to be a little more interesting. It does help. There are some areas that may not show up too well. So you kind of make things up as you go along. And we'll just continue to trace Image. Your lines. And then when we get to the center portion where the um, seed area of the poppy is, I kind of want a bit of a texture on there. So where the dots are on the stamp, I'm just going to press down and get a texture to imitate this look. And then just to imitate the dark section of the pod here, I'm just going to do some scribbly here with my little stylus. When we turn this over, you can see that there is an impression of a poppy. Now it's not very deep. And what we need to do then to uh, make it more visible is to define or refine with, this is a paper stump. And in order to define the lines of our stamp, I'm going to take the paper stump and trace the edges, both edges that are now raised on the embossing piece. So I will come around each side and I will define. And by that I mean taking my paper stump and just going, following the design. gotten a little bit of puffiness 
puffiness to it. And so I'm going to just take the edge of my paper stump and smooth, smooth out the edge to stretch that metal back out. Because the art metal is fairly thin, you want to make sure you don't poke through the metal, but you still need to give it enough pressure so that your lines are obvious on the front side. So what this does is it gives it an embossed Remember to refine on both sides of the line that you've drawn, which just gives more definition to the shape. I did use stays on ink to stamp this. Um, you could use an archival ink, something that won't slip too much when you're on a smooth surface like the metal. Since you don't see the ink, you don't need to heat set it or do any of those things that you might be worried about if you were actually going to be able to see the stamping. I didn't mention what we had been drawing on when I was embossing it. You can have it use an embossing pad, or this is a a mouse pad that I use. You just need something with some cush so you'll be able to get your stylus down in there to create an impression. So a little bit of cush for that part of the of the uh, job. The next thing we're going to do is because this is an art uh, metal it has a coated, a, just a painted or a coated surface and we can remove some of that paint and we are just going to use a little uh, brass bristle brush here to take some of the paint away and I usually use it in a circular motion and it just begins to remove some of the paint from the metal and this just gives you the opportunity to create some additional colors on your surface so we're gonna just go in here and scrape around until we get some of the paint color removed. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the red showing because I want I still want some of that color to show through. And you'll notice when you use the little bristle brush, you'll get a bit of texture from the brush which is a good thing. And also what that does is it gives the paint a surface to adhere to. Um, and while I'm noticing, these poppy stamps, the Donna Downey poppy stamps that I used to stamp with, they don't have a stem with them. So if you can see right here, I have added my own stem. I just drew a couple of lines on the back side and embossed a stem for the poppy that was over the, the smaller poppy that was over the top of the larger poppy. And so I'm gonna remove some of the paint from that also. And after you take away as much paint as you want, then you select your color of Paint, and I use an acrylic paint. I've used various ones. Um, if you use a translucent one, it's not going to cover as heavily as a more opaque paint, just, just like it would if you were painting something. And I do tend to move my piece around. to get into the nooks and crannies. And I'll take my nice clean cloth and wipe away some of the excess. Now 
I have a little variety of paints here. Um, I have some distress paint as well as some paper artsy fresco paint that I'm going to try. I did make a little sampler because I wasn't sure what color to go with. So I made a little sampler of six different paints. Um, and from there I just kind of picked a couple that I thought would look best. So the step now is to gather your supplies. We'll apply our paint, let it set for a moment, and then I have some baby wipes that we will wipe away the excess with. So I'm going to use the pumpkin from Paper Artsy on my flower here. And I'm going to use my handy dandy finger to apply my paint because it's so much easier to clean. And this is a fairly translucent paint. So I'm going to keep a lot of the background through it. This is not a precise, neat job. I just want to add a bit of color. So we have a couple of tones going on here. And we'll let it dry for just a bit. And while that's happening, probably a Q-tip would have been helpful because of this little space in the stem. But we're just going to dab some paint on there anyway. And get a little bit of that excess up so it dries more quickly. Before I start with my baby wipe, I'm just going to use a paper towel to dab up. Because I don't know that I really want to wipe a lot of this paint away since it's a translucent paint. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me a couple of tones. I'll still have the red from the, the um, metal color in there. But now I have this pumpkin-y color, kind of an orangish, kind of gives it a bit of an orangish, uh, not a bright orange, but like pumpkin. I guess that's the way they named it that. And I dab up some of this. And I'll go in and dab a little bit of my green off of there. And I think for this paint, I actually am only going to use the baby wipe to clean my fingers and clean off some of this excess paint that I was a little messy with around my edges. And I'll get some of that up. And so now you have a two-tone flower made out of metal. You could also add some black in here to the to the um, seeds. And then we're going to do oh, one other thing here. We are going to add some texture to a background. Ten Second Studio has a lot of these little art tools that you can use for metal. Uh, they have a variety of different heads in them that make different textures. For this, I'm just going to use this little wheel that has ridges in it, and I'm going to create some background texture. And I'm not looking for a specific pattern, so I'm just going back and forth. 
trying to get some of these little ridges into my metal to create a background pattern. And we'll continue with the whole background. And turn it around so I have some going one way and some going another. This will create a little bit of detail when we go to use some paint over the background of this part of the piece. Let's see if this helps a little bit. My wheel isn't rolling very well. Kind of has a mind of its own. Or maybe it's the operator, I don't know. It's the operator. When I am using art metal or metal to attach, I like to use like, um, red line sheets of red line uh, tape adhesive so the whole piece is backed with an adhesive. So now we have a little texture in the background, and I can show you on this piece. We did the same thing, put some texture on the background of it, and then took some black paint, some black acrylic paint, and that makes the texture pop on the background. One other step to do to make your image pop is to take a little bit of sandpaper and go over your raised edges. And this is just a 400 grit. And we'll see how this helps define those embossed areas. It takes a little bit of the paint off so you can see the edges better. It gives a little more definition to your image. And there you have a poppy that is painted and embossed and has a little background texture. <laughs>